involving uh, our homicide experts from CID headquarters, uh, Kampala Metropolitan. We, it also comprised of IT and forensic experts, our forensic services unit, and also uh, personnel from CMI, who were uh, comprised to investigate the horrific murder of Indian businessman Utam Bandari Sarimal. You are all aware he was the director of TFS Financial Services. Uh, he was allegedly shot by a police constable, Ivan Wawire, on the 12th at around 10 a.m. This incident was captured on CCTV, and of course uh, the footages that were released were completely upsetting. Uh, and uh, of course the unfortunate part of it is that uh, it took two and a half hours, that is from 10 to half past midday, uh, for, the, for this incident to, uh, to be reported at uh, Kampala Road uh, Police Post. So you can see during uh, that, that duration allowed for uh, this killer cop to uh, find his escape. Of course, this is the third <coughs> shooting of uh, high-profile people in a space of about two to three weeks, which has stimulated a lot of questions and debate on car gun handling protocols and use of deadly force by security personnel. Now, as we look for the answers, uh, we do admit that the actions of our officer are highly regrettable, and uh, it's uh, incredibly disappointing to see an innocent person uh, lose their life in such a manner by a police officer mandated by law and by training to protect uh, lives. So we continue to extend our condolences to the family of Kotam Pandari, Sarima, the Indian community in Uganda, uh, his friends, uh, and the staff of TFS Financial Services. Now, from the findings, uh, it clearly indicates that uh, the actions of our officer were deliberate, planned, and premeditated. Uh, before the 12th, uh, on the 11th of May, the suspect, while in civilian clothes, uh, met with Mr. Otam Bandari to establish his loan status and further discuss plans on how to trade it off uh, for a salary loan at uh, Standing Bank, that is William Street branch, uh, where his, his salary is actually posted. Uh, of course, so, uh, he, the, the, there was no agreement between him and the director of TFS. And uh, this is uh, an officer who had acquired a double loan. He acquired a loan on the 5th of August 2020 of 1 million with an interest of 320,000. So on a monthly basis, he was supposed to pay uh, 110,000 per month for, for one year. And uh, uh, before he could do uh, uh, even uh, complete that loan. Again, on the 5th of May 2021, he acquired a second loan of 1 million uh, on similar terms, but uh, he defaulted after a period of three months. So, when they failed to agree uh, on uh, the trade-off uh, with uh, Mr. Bandari, the following day now of, uh, of 12th of May, uh, the suspect in his full uniform uh, picked a rifle with four magazines, left his beat at CPS, and went straight to meet the director at uh, Raja Chambers. Uh, he even signed in the visitor's book, very uh, confident, and went, went straight to meet Mr. Otam Bandari. But while in the office, he even didn't sit down. He remained in a standing position with his hand. Uh, on the on the gun, and after a short uh, verbal exchange with the director, uh, he cocked his gun, shot the victim, and uh, uh, then 
uh, moved out. Uh, shortly, he realized that he had left his forms uh, behind. So that is when he returned. And while picking his form, load applicate loan form, indicating his bank, uh, his loan balance, he noticed that uh, the Indian victim was uh, still uh, breathing. So he fired additional shots and killed him instant and killed him. So his target was the victim and no one else. And uh, of course, so after the deadly shooting, the suspect formally uh, he confidently moved out, jumped on a border border, uh, which dropped him at CPS. He returned the gun uh, in the office of the Soko and, and asked uh, the Soko to watch over his gun. He would come back and pick it, going for a short break. Uh, so up to this stage, there was no suspicion because there was no report that was received. I think all the staff in the offices, everybody scampered for their dear life. Uh, it's unfortunate that there was no quick reaction or thoughtful attention regarding the conduct of the officer before, during, and after the shooting. So he managed to escape to his village at Walira, that is in Bumango Parish. Busia district and uh, our flying squad team with KMP and the DPC Busia uh, managed to intercept him while trying to cross into Kenya. So I want to thank the arresting teams uh, for the job well done. At the time of arrest, this is a suspect who was in very good shape and he was very sound. They transferred him to uh, KMP headquarters, uh, and, and uh, of course, upon interrogation, he, he, didn't, he did not appear remorseful at all, not even saying sorry for what he did, and uh, he admitted to having murdered the victim for allegedly uh, cheating him uh, on uh, uh, his... Uh, uh, on uh, his loan portfolio. So he indicated that he has no remorse and we've even taken him to the magistrate for an ex extra judicial statement. This is a statement where if somebody is confessing that he, 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 he committed uh, a, a, a a crime, like for this instance, a capital crime like this one, and is admitting, you take him to the magistrate and uh, an extrajudicial statement is reported out of his free will. So we have so far examined him, uh, the surgeons examined him, and they found that uh, uh, he's very normal and sound. Uh, after the extrajudicial statement, we are going to have uh, a psychiatrist uh, also examine his mental uh, condition. Uh, it is true that the uh, tragic murder could have been avoided if the owner of the killer weapon, that is Police Constable Stephen Muramba, had not left it unattended uh, in the room that he shared with the uh, Police Constable Ivan, and of course, as uh, our first policy on use of firearms demands, he should have uh, his Simromba should have returned this gun to the Amra uh, before moving out of the station. But uh, without lawful permission, he sneaked out of the station to attend to a personal matter, which is an outright case of gross indiscipline and negligence. As a result, he has also been charged in the disciplinary court with discredited for conduct and dismissed from the post this morning. Uh, and uh, so he's, uh, he's now a civilian and is going to be taken to the criminal court for uh, negligence of duties as a civilian. 